Good afternoon and happy holidays and thank you for being with us. At your request, uh, some people ask me to sometimes have content in English or interviews in English. There's a big proportion of foreigners living amongst us and also some expatriates who are living abroad and temporarily sometimes come to Malta. So my first guest today is uh, top criminal lawyer Dr. Joe Giglio and we're going to speak and discuss the current situation that quite a lot of you are worried about and concerned about. Thank you very much for, for coming with us again today. For the invite, yeah. um, I'd like to speak about the current situation. Obviously, every week it every moves, day. <laughs> every day it changes. But um, we never had uh, a discussion in English on this um, station. And I just wonder if we can explain the basic situation of what brought us here today. Well, basically, the situation that brought us here today um, all started, in my opinion, from when um, the Panama Papers were first revealed. The Panama Papers, in a Maltese context, revealed that there were um, three companies, two of which were owned by a certain Conrad Mitzi, who was the Minister for Energy at the time, Keech Kembri, who was the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, and another company, Grant, of which, at the moment, we only know it was set up and belongs to uh, a certain Brian Tonna of Nexia Bitti. Nexia Bitti are the advisors on financial matters, even to the Prime Minister, and these Panama Papers were revealed. Once these Panama Papers were revealed, essentially the next thing that happened was that uh, the Prime Minister opted to take no sort of action, and it was rather strange because Whenever in other countries you had a situation where somebody was linked to these Panama Papers, um, there were resignations. Now, it is also relevant to premise and to explain that Panama Papers revealed that there were companies set up in Panama with a whole network of, of, of underlying companies intended to sort of cover them up. It is also pertinent to understand that when you are opening these types of structures, when you are going to these jurisdictions, um, you usually go to them because you don't want to show um, what is being placed in those companies. And that was worrying. Explanations were given by, by Conrad Mitzi as to why he had opened this company, which explanation was not so tenable. It was an explanation that he opened it in order to pass the rent of a house he had in England. But when you consider how expensive it is to create the structure and how expensive it is to keep it, um, the, the, the explanation did not make much sense. Then we had another development. And another development was that there was another company called 17 Black, uh, which was um, passing on, or there was an email which was stating that it was passing on 5,000 euros a day to these two companies owned by Keech Cambry and Conrad Mitzi. Then, uh, unfortunately, we had a very, very tragic situation where a journalist who was investigating and digging up most of the information uh, was, was, was killed in a very horrendous way. Subsequently, Reuters, which is a news service, also paid money and continued this investigation to discover that 17 Black was owned by a certain Jorgen Fennec. Now, how does this all feature? Because this is like a jigsaw puzzle in actual fact. Jürgen Fennec is one of the shareholders in the company called Electrogas, which um, created a contract, which has a contract, which to that time was still not public, whereby um, they supply gas to the power station. Now, this Electrogas was one of the major cries, major battle uh, cries of the Labour Party that they promised that they would give us um, cleaner energy and better energy and cheaper energy. This whole contract was basically brokered between Electrogas and uh, Conrad Mitzi, who was the minister at the time, and it also turned out that the person who was on the adjudicating committee was a certain Brian Tonna of Nexia Bitti. And then you start fitting in the pieces. It's obviously very complex. It is complex, but slowly, slowly the pieces start to fit in mm. because then you start to understand. But why is the company of Jürgen Fennec passing on, or is there an email stating that it's going to pass on 5,000 euros a day to Conrad Mitzi, who was the Minister of Energy, who piloted this project to 
Keech Kemri, who was the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff. And, and these structures were set up by Nexia Bitti, by Brian Tonna, and this Brian Tonna is part of the consortium, rather the adjudicating committee, which actually chose Electra Gas. So uh, then uh, the allegations of corruption, or rather the smell of corruption, which one saw when the Panama Papers were revealed, all of a sudden started to, 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 to fit in and become clearer. And, and then uh, we also discovered, which was even more uh, tragic, it's all very bad, mind you, but that the person who seems to have commissioned the explosion of Daphne Caruana Galizia was actually Jorgen Fennec. And then you come to understand that, that a journalist was actually assassinated because she was discovering and investigating and coming up with um, stories which are not stories anymore, but facts now. And you have this tragic situation. And at the moment, <coughs> the case is going through the courts. And at the moment, the case is going to the courts where you will have uh, uh, Jorgen Fennec who is accused, three persons who are accused of having actually and placed the bomb and there is also a situation of a presidential pardon that was g given to the middleman as he is known he is known as the middleman because he was the person who sort of found the three persons to carry out the bomb to actually manufacture it place it and he was the go-between with the with, with Jürgen Fennec who it is being alleged was the person who uh, commissioned commissioned Toma to do this. What yeah, was yeah, then even more worrying, if I, if I may ask, was that uh, the day after or two days after that this Melvin Ten Toma informed Jürgen Fennec that he had actually found persons to carry out this job and that they had agreed on the price. Um, two days after he was invited to go to Castile, where over there he met Keech Kembri, where he was taken around a tour of Castile, like, like his some dignitary. And, um, took a photo with, with Keech Kembri in Castile and also besides taking a photo who was also offered and given a job which he did not need, which he did not want, which he did not ask for and where he basically was going to be paid for exceptionally doing nothing. This was also worrying because then this continued to show that um, there was a link between Toma and, 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 and Castile. In the more recent days we have also found out uh, that journalists have published stories whereby our own Prime Minister was given a 20,000 euro Bulgari watch from Jürgen Fennec. He was given three bottles of Petrus from uh, Jürgen Fennec on various occasions, a party, a birthday. And this also obviously becomes very worrying and very annoying, and which is why people are angry, which is why people are protesting. Because of the fact that you are saying that something so horrible, something so terrible, something which had never happened, was actually um, had as its backdrop the close relations between um, businessmen, in this particular case Fennec, because obviously not all businessmen are, 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 do these things, and, and, and the office of the Prime Minister. And this has tarnished us incredibly. When the rule of law is being so tarnished, um, the economical yes, um, yes. repercussions are going to be quite There big. is a reason for this because we're so small. We do not have steel, we do not have coal, we do not have, we do not have manufacturing companies. We are a nation that has managed to survive and create uh, our own well-being thanks to our own initiatives, our own work. And one of these is, for example, when we got independence, we started with tourism, which based on reputation, which is still there today. Subsequently, the Nationalist Administration introduced new concepts, which was um, financial services, captive insurance, gaming companies, and created legislation to attract foreign investors to come here to Malta and gain certain tax benefits. This is all based on reputation, however. So once you have a situation where the reputation of your country is tarnished, the ripple effect is on the economy because those who are here would not want to be associated with a country that has a reputation which is so bad and those who might be interested in coming here would not be interested anymore in coming here and obviously all this would have a consequential effect on our economy.
So you see it sort of happening very, very soon. We have, it, 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 first of all, it is already happening. The financial Are services... Are there any actually, actual companies who have left the country already? Well, I can tell you from my own personal experience, because within my law firm, and also I meet other people who work in the same area, um, we have a market which relates to financial services. The industry is bleeding at the moment. People are asking questions. People are uh, relocating to foreign jurisdictions. The amount of queries that persons who work in the financial services industry used to have four, five, six, seven years ago are not the same. The amount of new clients coming in are not the same. If you see the MFSA statistics, the MFSA is the registrar of mm -hmm. companies, you will also see that statistically there has been a drop in the number of companies that has been registered. So yes, it is factually there. We can still survive, but we are suffering. Yeah. We are bleeding. And there is a ripple effect uh, eventually. Of course. And what about the property market? The ripple effect is precisely what you are referring to. Gaming companies who come here bring with them employees. Audit firms who are doing all this work bring with them foreign employees. These need accommodation, so they rent out properties. They go to the supermarkets. They use our means of, of, of public transport. They pay for these services. They pay their taxes here in Malta. They pay um, national insurance. So clearly and obviously, when you go to a macro level, you will come to a situation where everybody would start to feel the pinch. Because if I had um, a grocer where uh, various foreigners came because they're working here, and this grocer now has a drop in his clientele, he's obviously going to feel the pinch of yes. that. And eventually it leads to unemployment and all sorts of other things. Let's hope we'll not get there. And we have to act fast. Um, can I speak about the, the family of Daphne Caruana Galizia? Sometimes there is seen to be like a mere afterthought. Perhaps, I mean, nobody knows what they're really going through. I mean, at the moment, they've lost a wife, a mother. And I think we tend to forget that. Do you think they'll ever find justice? They will only find justice when they see that the authorities have gone to the bottom of this. And when they have seen and they actually believe in the fact that whatever had to be done was done in order to ensure that justice is done. But justice will not bring back their daughter. Obviously, everybody has a quench for justice. The family, as a family, have lost someone who is so important to them and lost in such a terrible way. They will never get justice, in my opinion, because... What happened to her should have never happened. Had we taken action as a country before, had we started to look at things differently, had we started to investigate seriously before, had action taken before, this should have never happened and would have never happened. And because that is why for them it is going to be of difficult. Course. There are two issues. I mean, the first are the allegations prior to the last general election of corruption, and then obviously the murder after. So they're two very different um, They're different crimes. but interlinked, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, they are different but interlinked. Before the election of 2017, we had uh, ideas that two companies were formed in Panama. We, ha we knew who the, o the owners of two of them were. Then we had uh, the Prime Minister who um, commissioned a report to establish whether Egrant belonged to him. Then we had the result of that inquiry, which was not published in its entirety. It was the leader of the opposition who had to go to court, to actually open a court case, to be given a copy of this report. Then we started reading this report, and we started reading that um, the magistrate could only come to the conclusion that from what he had, he could not say that it belonged to the Prime Minister as his wife. Mm -hmm. But we also found out in this inquiry, which now, thanks to the leader of the opposition, was published in its entirety, that the magistrate had a lot of difficulties. Uh, the difficulties related to um, USB stick, USB files that were found to be empty, uh, data datas from servers which could not be retrieved. And, and obviously, so what we knew before the election was suspicion. What we now know has unfortunately confirmed that this country was going to the rocks. 
what happens um, about missing data if data is missing how it can means that, that the, it means that the magistrate can't work mm -hmm. it means that the magistrate does not have the information he requires mm -hmm. to investigate in your opinion anyone who's been involved in either these allegations of corruption or the murder no matter how minor their involvement is should they be allowed to keep their job of course not I've no doubt about that going forward can we um, perhaps ask your opinion about e grant everyone's very curious about uh, well basically all we know about e grant is that it was a company which was set up at the same time that the companies of conrad mitzi and uh, keach cambry were set up they were set up by the same audit firm which was nexia bt at the point that the panama papers um, hacked the servers of the panamanian law firm mossack fonseca up to that point in time the owner seemed to be Nexia Betty, uh, but from the grant report we discovered that a certain Brian Cheney who works at Nexia Betty had asked Mossack Ponseca to sign a declaration which he wrote himself confirming that Egrant uh, did not belong to the Prime Minister but rather belonged to him. We, this is what we know. We know that the magistrate had a certain tools at its disposal with which to work and others were not made available to him. Um, he could only come to the conclusion that from what he has, um, and at that point in time when all this was discovered, the company uh, was not of the Prime Minister and of his wife. He also found out, the magistrate found out, that there were some documents which had been forwarded by an alleged whistleblower, uh, this is the allegation in the, in the report, which seemed to have been falsified. But it's still a, a, an open book, if you yes. ask me to honest through this. How long do you think this is going to go on for? Well, I don't know how long it's going to take. Let's hope it's as short as possible, because the quicker we get back on our feet, the better for our country.